Silence is a gorgeous point-and-click adventure that picks up from 2010's The Whispered World. We've seen a resurgence in this type of game from the likes of Telltale Games, but how does this game originally released in 2016 port over to the Nintendo Switch? I'm James Zemero and this is Switch Watch. Let's find out in our review of Silence. Rarely does a game have such a moving opening scene. Noah and his younger sister Rini are in danger. Set in what appears to be a town during World War II, bombs begin falling and Noah takes his sister to a bomb shelter, trying to protect her and charmingly comfort her through this traumatic event. The scene really moves the heartstrings and gets us invested in these key characters from the off. Another bomb hits and Noah awakes in a lush and surreal landscape. This is where if you've played the first game, things will be a little bit clearer. The Whispered World takes place in the Land of Silence, an imaginary place in between life and death, and Noah and Rini are flung into this magical realm. If you haven't played the first game, some of the dialogue will go over your head with references back to the previous title's cast. The story develops as Noah realises he is in silence and traverses the land in search of Rini. Along the way, he is pulled into a plot involving a resistance movement, a false queen and monsters. The story flits between Noah and Rini and she is also flung into some fantastical situations. Both characters bump into a cast of interesting NPCs that you want to find out more about, but the story whisks you along rather quickly, which is a bit of a shame. It would have been great to spend more time getting to know these characters. As a result, the story's pace is a little bit off. It hints at Rini's strong-willed character and Noah's desire to help his sister. It can often be a failing of games to really capture what a child's mindset is like and to portray them accurately. Here, I feel that in particular, Rini is voice acted really well and the narration supports a child's view of this magical world. At around six hours long, you can see how they've struggled to cram everything in. Whilst I would have hoped for a little bit more screen time for some of the characters, overall I'm left wanting more, which has got to be a good sign. Growing up, some of my fondest gaming memories are of adventures like Discworld, Monkey Island and Broken Sword. In a similar vein, the game plays out across a series of scenes which you can explore with puzzles to solve. Unlike those games, however, the focus leans more to the visual story side as opposed to the gameplay. Like those games, you are searching for clues and items which you can then use to interact with other elements in clever ways to progress. The difference is that you don't have a bag of items and you don't venture very far. Each scene is enclosed across one or two screens. As a result, it's often a case of looking around, picking up an item and putting it somewhere. This is a case of the gameplay not wanting to get in the way of a magical adventure. To add a bit more interactivity to the game, there are some more involved sections. For example, as Noah, you jump onto a precarious ledge and need to balance on it by carefully using the left stick. In other sections, you take control of Spot, a cute little caterpillar that can flatten and puff up into a ball or drink some water and spit it out later on. None of these sections are particularly tricky, but go some way towards making you feel more like an active participant in the world. Similarly, there are decision points to make, some of which will result in your death if you choose incorrectly. Whilst I can see the reason for this approach, it does result in a fairly simple gameplay experience. I would have enjoyed some tougher puzzles and a bit more exploration. The scenes take place in some quite small and tight areas and you notice this when playing in handheld mode. There's no touchscreen enablement and I suppose this is because your fingers would just be a little bit too clunky and they would get in the way. If perhaps the viewpoint was slightly zoomed out, this would be a more enjoyable experience on the move. The opening scene is excellent for the story and visuals, but it's pulled together by a powerful score and solid narration. The game is voice acted throughout and I found Rini's lines to be believable and moving, whilst Noah's are pretty solid as well. The light, the colours, the smell? This is silence. Whoa! Whoa! It's like a dream. As a game that plays much like a visual novel, it is important to get the audio right. And as with the voice acting, the background sounds, eerie effects and music are excellent. The use of haunting sounds and orchestral strings really do give you that sense of wonder and fear at every turn. 
As far as indie titles go, I cannot think of many that have a more complete and beautiful set of visuals. The world is created in 3D, with a striking aesthetic that conjures thoughts of a Pixar animation. Not in terms of the outright quality, but in the sense that the world is vibrant and has a magical quality. Each scene is crafted lovingly and motion is strong also. Starting off in the real world makes the Land of Silence stand out for its vibrancy. Performance is solid, the port has been done well, and the game does look good on the move, though the size of the screen meant for me personally, I preferred playing this on a TV. If I'm being very picky, I would point out that the lip movement doesn't match up to the words, likely due to the fact that the game was created in German, but this is a tiny thing in an otherwise stunning visual treat. In particular, light, shading, and characters' expressions look gorgeous. Coming in at £39.99 in the US for a physical copy of £35 in the UK is quite steep. However, there is a digital version available for £19.99 or $25.99. Now, that's still a pretty hefty price tag for what is ultimately a six-hour game that you have no real reason to visit once again. That said, the experience is well-crafted, very enjoyable, and is gorgeous to look at and great to hear. Silence is best described as an interactive novel with some point and click elements. The gameplay experience is a little bit light but thoroughly enjoyable. It's the story, audio and visuals really the sensory experience where this game shines. If you enjoy a good story and can see past the price tag then this is one that you will definitely enjoy. For everyone else it might be worth considering picking this up when it inevitably goes on sale. Overall, this one is a very solid 7 out of 10 for me. Many thanks for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, why not consider subscribing, hit that subscribe button, and also like this video if you enjoyed it. Let us know your thoughts. If you're picking up the game, if you've played it on PC already, what do you think about it? Pop us a comment down below. I'm James Romero, and this is Switchwatch. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.